Out in the field, we rely on StealthCam to capture high-definition images and video so we can pattern and gauge the wildlife on our property. But where should you set up a StealthCam scouting camera? Wade has some suggestions on just that. I really like to pay attention to, you know, where east and west is a lot of times. Now, granted, you got to set it up where you think you can get, you know, the best action where the game's going to be and what you've got around you. But when you have your choice, like right here, I've got some choices, you know. The east is over here, west is behind me, and I don't want to set it up directly facing either one of them to where when the sun first comes up, I get kind of some blurred images. The sun causes it to go off, and it, you know, just like any camera, it can't, it can't overcome that brightness of what's happening right there. So when I can, I like to set it up where that's kind of, you know, off to the side one way or the other. I want to face it into an area where there's not a lot of, of false things going to trigger it. For instance, branches, I'll cut them. I'll clear some of that low hanging grass if I've got a low hanging camera. So I always keep that into mind whenever I'm, whenever I'm setting one up, uh, you know, what I've got around me. If you start looking at this particular setup for a camera to, that you're putting out, we've got a Stealth Cam uh, G Series uh, a Model 30 right here, and that's got a great 80, 80 foot range to be able to set up for those low light situations. And this is a pretty tight, confined area, so it's a perfect camera for right here. We actually have an American Hunter feeder sitting on this side of it, uh, which is going to draw a lot of game into this area. And this little little draw, so to speak, right here is it has a lot of game that comes in it. It's it, There's a road that kind of separates it out. We've actually chosen to mount the camera here on an old stump. This happened to be a perfect situation. Use the strap that came with it and it's looking right up here and there's not a lot of low cover to cause it to trigger or get false readings, but what we do see a lot here, a tremendous amount of turkeys up close and personal. In fact, you can even you know, get them staring right at it and getting really up close. You'll get some hogs rooting around and a lot of deer that cross left to right here. And it's caused us to decide to set our stand over here to the, uh, to the right of it in a perfect situation. So when you start breaking down how to set up your scouting camera, pay attention to how you think the deer are feeding. Obviously here we've got a feeder set up nearby it and taking advantage of things that are in the area and went in and set up a, the, the 30, which is perfect for this scenario. And now we're getting some great photos. I've had this camera out for several months now, and uh, what's, what's really interesting is when you, when you start to click through here and look at the battery life, I'm still at 79% uh, with all of that amount of pictures that I've taken, and I've got it set to go off on a burst mode. I'm using the quick set uh, setting on this one, which is number two. So by setting this up the right way, I haven't had to mess with the batteries. I actually just come through here and, and pop in and out my memory cards now and put a new one in and take off and go on to the next one. So this one is just a pretty easy little setup here and it's something you should keep in mind whether you're sitting up near a feeding area, a watering area, or a pinch point that uh, it's a great little easy position when you can find a good clear view right here of stuff coming through and there's no telling what you're going to see from head high turkeys peeking at it all the way to your pigs and obviously some pretty good whitetail. To find out more, go to StealthCam.com.